Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Piyush and this is day 4 video in the series Terraform with Azure or 20 days of TF Azure, whatever you want to call it. In this video, we'll be looking into state file and everything about it. Again, it will be a complete hands-on video. So the comments and like target of this video is 150 likes and 100 comments in the next 24 hours. So please try to do that and without wasting any time, let's get into the video. Okay, So this is what we did in the last video. Uh, we created a simplest Azure resource such as Azure storage account and resource group. Now I want to take one step further and show you the Terraform state file. So there is this Terraform state file over here. So what it is and how it was generated, what is the significance of it, right? So let me show you a diagram. So as I've told you before that Terraform makes the changes to the infrastructure based on the desired state and actual state, right? Desired state is what is there in your TF files. So I have suggested that there is an Azure RM resource group and then there is an Azure storage account in my TF file. So that's my desired state. That's what I want to be created. Now, what is the actual state of infrastructure? How would Terraform know that these resources have not been already created? Or what are the changes that we need to make? So when, I, when we made the changes, how would it know what changes do I need to make? Like what is the actual state right now? we updated from GRS to LRS, right? How would Terraform know that current value is GRS? Like, does it go every time to the infrastructure and check all those things? Or how would it do that? So it does that with the help of a state file. So in this state file, the one that we just saw, in this state file, uh, it's usually created with the name terraform.tf state and it has the actual state of infrastructure. So when we created the resources, okay, to keep a copy of all the metadata, so a resource group, a storage account, all the details within it, including some of the confidential, some of the secret data, it stores that into the state file. So this is the single most important file that is there for Terraform configuration and we have to save it securely. We have to access it securely. We have to make sure that it is backed up properly and avoid making any changes in this file directly. Like there are a lot of things about it. Right? So this is what we're going to look more about, like how do we store it or how do we access it? There are some best practices, right? Some of them I have just briefly discussed. So let look, let's look. let look into that a little more. So as I said, when we ran the Terraform commands, it created the file and it stored it locally within my system, right? So that's not a best practice. The best practice is to re use a remote backend. Remote backend means at a storage location, which is remotely accessed from the Terraform as a local file. And what are these uh, remote backends? So it could be either S3 bucket. If you are using AWS, if you are using Azure, it could be Azure blob storage. If you are using GCP, it could be GCP storage account and so on. So you store your state file to a remote backend and access it locally. So that's why it's called remote backend. So what you'll do, you'll run the Terraform commands. It will access the file from remote, run it as local, and then it will make changes to your infrastructure. Now, that's one of the uh, best practice. The another is do not update or delete this file. You should not be making any changes manually to this file, else it will corrupt it and it will make a lot of mess. So avoid that. State locking is another feature. So to make sure that because there is one central file located at the remote repository, so multiple users can try to provision or make changes to the infrastructure at the same time. And it will leave the infrastructure in the inconsistent state. Avoid that from happening. You have to enable the state locking. We'll see how it works. In uh, AWS, there is a separate mechanism. You use DynamoDB table. And inside that you create a lock ID for that. But in Azure and GCP, like the storage account comes with 
the lock itself so uh, it will be enabled by default so that's another important thing and then isolation of state file is one of the best practice like for different environment you can create separate state files to keep them separate from each other now you have to also make sure that you regularly back up this file because if there is an accidental deletion accidental corruption your infrastructure state will be lost what what that means is like let's say this is what you have used your actual is, state is in this infra okay you use a terraform config to provision some infra resources and you have let's say deleted this file this file do not exist now now terraform would not know the actual state of your infrastructure so whenever you make any changes it will not make these changes to the existing resources because for terraform these are not created by terraform you have to import the resources again so there is a lot more complex process to do that so avoid that from happening at any cost so that's the terraform state file best practices now let's go back to our uh, terminal okay and let's work more on it like how to create it and how to uh, create the remote backend and so on so i'm gonna create a new folder over here and let's just call it day 04 okay currently i don't have any resources created and uh, let's use the main.tf from here So here's my main.tf and now I don't want my state file to be created locally. I want to be created in a remote backend. So for that, what you will have to do, you have to create a separate storage account that is not managed by Terraform, but it is separately managed and you will store your state file in that as an object. Okay. So I have an azure cli script you can create that from uh, the portal as well but like i try to make use azure cli more because of the simplicity and because it doesn't change much often and it is easy to automate things with the cli so that's what i'm gonna do so i'll create a backend.sh okay here's the content so let me show you what it does simple simple commands Right. We are assigning some variables. So resource group name, let's call it TF state day four storage account name day four and a random number because storage account has to be unique. Container name is TF state container is the folder name inside the storage account, which will have the storage uh, TF state file. Then I will create a resource group, a storage account and a blob container. OK, so again, this resource group, this storage account is separate from the Terraform resources. This is considered, let's say, as a prerequisite to using Terraform because we'll be storing our uh, storage account backend details over here. Now, you don't have to always delete this because you can use this later on as well. So I'll just OK, don't have to copy it. I have already done a TF login. So, oh, sorry, AZ login. So that's all right. Now let's go back to day four folder and let's run this chmood 775 backend.sh. So I'm just going to execute this file. Hopefully, it should create the resources. If it doesn't have any error, I haven't tested it yet, but let's see. Okay. Uh, it says provisioning succeed. I guess, yeah, it was resource group that's been created with the name TF state day four. Um, let's go back and hit refresh. Yes, TF state day four and resources have not been created yet. So let's pause the video for some time. Okay, so after a few minutes, my storage account has been created. And as you see, the name is day four and then a random number after it and it should have the storage container as well so if i go to storage browser and blob containers so tf state is the folder name and a tf state file will be created over here so let's go back 
okay it says created equal to true our uh, resources have been created now that we have created the resources we have to provide this backend details in a terraform so i have to tell terraform that yes we have a remote backend that you should be using going forward right so for that um, let's add the backend code in our terraform file so first let's go over here and you know search for azure backend terraform okay and if you go to like you can go to either of those hashicorp uh, website or the microsoft website both will work so do, 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 do. okay here's the sample backend code for that okay so there are different authentication that we'll be using because we'll be accessing a storage account now storage account has to be secure it should be only allowed access based on the role that you have been assigned to so we'll be using uh, this mechanism which is storage account with access keys i'll show you how to do that and you can use active directory authentication as well maybe later we'll try this one as well or you can use the managed identity federation such as oidc so let's use the simplest one for now which is with access keys okay so i'm gonna copy the backend details from here okay and let's go back main.tf now if you are worried where to add it you can check the microsoft tutorial or like i know where to add it it's just to show you uh you can go to this and you know inside the terraform block itself you can add the backend or you can create a separate file we have not really covered the file structure yet so i'm dumping everything in the single file so we'll divide that later on but for now let's just add it in the terraform configuration so inside terraform um do, 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 over here let's add the backend details now if you see we have few details storage account uh, resource group name so this is the resource group that we have just created so uh this is the storage account name oh. okay let's go to overview this is storage account storage account name container name is tf state and key is the name of the terraform tf state file so let's call it demo.terraform.tf state for now or dev dot because this is like we are still in the early phases let's not call it prod and then uh, we have to provide the resource group that it belongs to which is tf state day four all right so i've added those details now let's run tf plan again now it says it does not recognize it because this is the directory that we have created newly there is no tf state in it so for it it's a new configuration so for that we have to run terraform in it to initialize the backend now it will download the plugin over here again with dot terraform directory it has a terraform.tf state file but this time if you open it it will not have much details or it does have but rest of the fields it has hidden already so it only have uh, the non sensitive data right like storage account name resource group name key container name and so on rest it provides at null okay now if i run terraform plan again okay it says two to add zero to ten zero to destroy but if we go back okay inside this storage browser and then blob container we have this container we have our file generated over here which is the tf state file dev.terraform.tf state now this file is the remote backend 
whenever we run any command over here, let's say Terraform apply, we run it, then that file will be accessed as a local file. You won't even know that you are referring the remote file. It will be like a local file for Terraform. So let's run Terraform apply hyphen hyphen auto approve. Because the user that I'm using uh, currently it has the contributor role, the service principal has the contributor role. So it did not ask me the access keys. But in case it does, you have to get the access keys from the storage account, assign it to a variable and then access it. So if you want, you can try it out and let me know if you face any issues. But with this, uh, your infrastructure will be created. Your infrastructure will be provisioned. You just have to make sure you have separate storage account because one storage account is the resource that we are provisioning. The other storage account is the remote backend. So that remote backend should be kept separately from Terraform. Okay. So you have to manage it separately. Now, I think that's it about this video. In the next video, uh, we'll be looking into Terraform variables, precedence of variables, and I guess type constraint. So that's part of the next video. Um, I will see you soon. And if you like the video, make sure you comment on it you complete the comments and like target and i will see you then thank you so much for watching have a good day